All right, so remind me, Newton's second law, some of the forces equals ma. So if there is no acceleration, then some of the forces equals what? The, what do you mean? So, no so acceleration? If, yeah, so if an object is either not moving or undergoing constant velocity, so that would mean the acceleration is zero, and so the sum of the forces would add to zero. Great, so yep, equilibrium, what we've learned about. So some of the force is zero, again, either not moving or at constant velocity. So, or we learned that it could just simply be ma, or when there's uniform circular motion, we learned that in the radial direction, the sum of the forces adds up to, yeah, mv squared over r, mv squared over r. Sweet, so these were the three situations we looked at. So now what we're gonna learn, we already alluded to, if I can write the capital sigma here, is the sum of the torques equals I alpha. And again, we might end up with one of two situations here, either simply that it does equal I alpha because there is an angular acceleration, or if there's no angular acceleration, and tell me how there could be no angular acceleration. So how could an object have no angular acceleration? When it's moving constant? Yeah, if it's moving at constant angular velocity or if it's just not moving at all. Right. Cool. So, and this is a new condition for equilibrium. So it turns out in a rotational sense for objects that might have a chance to rotate, we actually now have two conditions for equilibrium. The sum of the forces must equal zero and the sum of the torques must equal zero. So for an object at They're equilibrium. Not they're not mutually exclusive. So to be at equilibrium, both of those conditions must be met. Cool. So, and let's look at some examples of classic torque problems involving equilibrium. All right, number five. I love the diagram there. Um, what must be the weight of the child on the left-hand side of the seesaw for it to be in equilibrium? So in this case, child on the right-hand side is 30 kilograms. And so in this case, to be in equilibrium, we've got two conditions. Some of the forces equal zero and some of the torques equal zero. And I would recommend you start off with some of the torques. Uh, it's usually a much more useful uh, equation in this context, in this chapter. So if it doesn't get you what you need, then I'll, by all means, go on and move on to the sum of the forces equal zero. Uh, so just in... For just for solving purposes, okay. yep. So some of the torques equal zero. So if you notice, the child on the right-hand side is gonna get this thing to rotate in which direction, clockwise or counterclockwise? Uh, clockwise. So clockwise. And the child on the left-hand side is gonna cause it to rotate counter. And so in this case, I'm gonna make counterclockwise positive, just like positive uh, 90, 180, 270, 360. So I'm making counterclockwise positive. I'll make clockwise negative. It's kind of a standard convention, but obviously you can do it either way you want to. So in this case, we could say that force times lever arm. Ah, I want to make that an L so badly. Plus force times lever arm. And in this case, I'm going to replace this plus with a minus because one of them is causing rotation clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So I'm making this one the counterclockwise and this one clockwise. Cool, and these are gonna add up to zero. So instead of taking this approach, what I often do is just notice, I'm just gonna move this over to the other side and I'll have F perpendicular R equals F, that's not an F, F perpendicular R, and I just put the clockwise on one side and the counterclockwise on the other way, other side, and it's essentially the same thing as saying the sum of the torques equals zero. I just gotta make sure they go on the correct side. And so in this case, uh, counterclockwise, I don't know his mass, so I have an mg is the force. So and in this case, that force is directed at what angle relative to this lovely force seesaw? Yeah, so it's perpendicular, so I don't have to worry about sine theta because sine 90 is one. So, and then the lever arm distance is 1.5 meters. So, and the force on the other side, yeah, 30 times 9.8. times the 2.0 meters, and we can totally solve for our mass now. Notice I can just get rid of the Gs, they're gonna cancel anyways, and we'll do that. So in this case, 30 times two is 60, divide that by 1.5, and what do we get? Cool, but that mass of that child must be 40 kilograms, so some of the torques here uh, equal zero.